Everybody, welcome. My name is Dean. Uh, it is time for a program. A program that emanates out of Toronto, touches California, all the way over to Edmonton, Alberta. And Walk tickles the balls the of Alberta. Alberta. <laughs> Lachlan Cross joins us from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. You can find him on Twitter at Lachlan Cross. Uh, Bonzi joins us from Palm Desert, California. Are you still hold up in Palm Desert, California? Is that correct? Is that where you're? Yes, I am. What is yeah. the point of that? Like, mm. hey, uh, I, th- I think I'm going to go to Palm Desert and hang out in 156 degree weather. Yeah, I thought it would be a good idea. Some would call hey, it crazy. Uh, I have in friends. The summer. Yeah, uh, I have friends here. No, it's coming to the best time in Palm Desert. Uh, not sure I'll be here for the best time, but uh, the good weather is coming. But I have friends mm. here, and then that led to pre-vaccination shot a golfing a few times a week on a private golf course where the LPGA play for $20 a round when people are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars and it just hey put up the heat doesn't bother me I I work on the bus every day yeah I have to go to the back sometimes where it's a little colder but uh, I love it here surrounded by mountains 360 degrees palm trees everywhere I'm at a beautiful resort that they're giving me an amazing rate and it just didn't really make sense to leave to be honest. Is it a resort? Like it, you say resort, but it's a, so there's, it's there's campground, a few, right? Nah, this is a, I uh, listen, I've been You're to in a, a campground on my trip. Like a nice campground. I'm not, I'm not shitting yeah. on it, but like when you say resort in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah. Oh, you got a well, guy I, coming around offering you free m- mescal. You've got, you know, yeah. uh, like, Oh, the sitting by the pool all day. I'm sure there's a pool. But but you're saying free resort, towel. yeah. Like ta- like, can I get more towel? Like, you don't have that out there, do you? Like it's it's no. a KOA. It's a glorified. You have a lawn nice chair that you wrecked. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I've been I've been to a plenty where there's no <laughs> pools, there's no tennis courts, there's no fancy air conditioned gym. So like, this is every and they call it an Emerald Desert RV Resort, and and it literally is in the campground camping world. It's a fucking resort here, bro. Yeah, okay, <laughs> are you the okay. are you the oldest okay. one? Are, are the youngest one like is everyone like no no really? uh okay. there's a lovely couple just across the way brand new baby they've been here longer than i have um so are funny. the majority of people that go to these rv resorts by the way the, the the two letters that you put in before resort definitely dictate whether or not it's resort but our rv resort are they running from the law are all <laughs> like are they yeah. all transients are it's they like, all no, like fucking anybody, like you, or they're like I, I can't commit to anything. I just need to kind of be on. Anybody the who lives like, on an acreage is? as well is yeah, hiding it, from the law on some level. Everybody here has a different story. Now, again, this is a higher end place. Um, most so of white the people here, crime. either a lot of people that uh, are staying here are kind of from around the area. Uh, a lot of white like, collar guys that just fucking resorted to camping, right? Yeah, like, that's what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Well, it's weird here because there's no, you can't have a campfire. Hiding uh, from the IRS. You're in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Fires are. Uh, At and the it's Palm hot. Desert RV Resort, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that should be a fucking commercial for everybody that needs to go on you the know, land. Here's, if you here's committed how a you... crime and you need to run away from it, come to the KOA in Palm Desert. <laughs> it's here's what I community think. And everything. Here's what I think you should do. Just And this is just for, your, for our amusement and your information you should just wander around the rv park okay ask everybody that you're friendly with if they would like to uh come on your show on your podcast okay Mm. or ask if you can talk about them their names their first and last names on your podcast and just Uh, wait for the reaction this is (laughs) this has already happened mister you should have seen if it's a hard no no, <laughs> I met. Hey, want to come on my podcast? No Ooh. fucking way. No fucking way. Not a chance. <laughs> yeah. I've been running from the law for a while. Are you well, sure? I got a thousand, thousand plus subscribers. <laughs> no fucking way. Not even interested in it. But I think that would be a great show. That would be a lot. I agree with Locke. Like, I want to know if you're down there, you got to yeah. do a, an investigative deep dive into 
Who the fuck you? is camping out all year yeah. long with their family at a campground <laughs> what in a bomb desert? Horrible like, shit. That's what, did you do yeah. in your they, last town? They love it, you, dude. They love the lifestyle. It's, it's, it's because it's, there's no police out front of the house. Yeah, well, that's the, why they I, love it. The three people that I've met and become new friends with, and we had a fantastic weekend together. Uh, they're all cops. <laughs> Two are still active, oh. and one is uh, one's retired. And Reggie. Reggie is going to be a new part of Bonzi Live uh, coming up. We're going to do about a, it's got to be a four or five, six part series because Reggie, yeah. uh, wonderful fella, uh, African American, he used to work for Bill Cosby when he was a teenager and no. was a personal driver for years. True story. No Bill way. Cosby paid for Reggie to go to firefighting college because that was Reggie's dream. Uh, Bill made it happen. And then Reggie went on from uh, firefighter and now he's like, Way high up in the police department. Reggie shot people. The stories that I heard from Reg and Roger on the weekend would blow your guys' minds. Anyways, Reggie's too good not to have on the show. He's ecstatic to be a part of this. Uh, I gave him the shout out on Friday's show, and they were all sitting across the street watching. They just thought it was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> you're a big star. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. wait to meet Reggie. So he worked for Cosby. Did he tell you stories about like, was he around for any Going of the, the Rhythmol drinks? Yeah. He told great stories, but he <laughs> said, you know, and, and he, he owes Cosby everything he's got today. And, and he'll admit that. But he said never in his wildest dreams in a lifetime working for Cosby. And he worked for him for a long time. Um, nothing like that ever happened. Not that he saw really? or not, not on his watch. Yeah. Yeah. We it's got funny right how it. guys that rape like countless numbers of women are good at hiding it. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow, yeah. Yeah. I, you, you know, know it's what fun, it is? It's funny interesting because, because I was because watching it, an old Norm McDonald video because Norm died, right? Uh, we'll get to Norm. We've got a big thing with Norm. Uh, but did you ever see that one episode of him talking about Bill Cosby with, with Jerry Seinfeld in uh, getting comedians in cars getting coffee, that series that he has? Yeah. Seinfeld had? Yeah. It was one of the sneakiest, fucking funniest comments. And it was like right at the time when Bill Cosby was going under that. And everybody's like, ooh, don't talk about it. This was, speaking of Cosby, this was maybe one of the greatest takes on the whole thing that I've ever seen. Now, do you think uh, Cosby's uh, legacy uh, will be hurt? Yeah. You do, huh? I mean, there was a comedian, Patton Oswalt, he told me, I think the worst part of the Cosby thing was the hypocrisy. And I disagreed. <laughs> you disagree with that? Yeah. I thought it was the raping. <laughs> As my feeling, most rapists are hypocrites. You don't meet many who go, I like raping, and I, I know it's not politically correct, but by God, people go, well, he's not being a hypocrite, and that's the worst part. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Norm had an interesting take on stuff, eh? You can tell he was yeah. constantly, there's guys, there's guys in that world that they're always... They're always working on a bit. They're, like, the whole, their entire existence is, and that was Norm. Norm, anytime you saw him in front of a camera, you could tell he was working on a bit. Yeah. Right. And working on a bit That's that not a nobody else thing. was working on, right? Yeah. Like, that was the thing is like when they you watch, I don't know. Were you guys fans? I was a huge Norm McDonald fan from Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. He was uh, great. It, and then uh, Billy Madison, I was like, fuck, that guy's like just the same in every movie. He's deadpan. He's funny. He's sneaky. Yeah. Sneakiest comedian because he was always working on these bits that nobody else was working on and delivered them in such a way that you're like, I got to be able to kind of hang on to this. Like, I got to be able to fucking follow this guy along. You had to pay attention to Norm when he was doing comedy, right? Yeah. And his passing just kind of brought up all the old Norm McDonald stuff because he was kind of... You know, he was hard to work with, one of the loveliest people in the world, and had some depth to him that nobody did. I got a chance to interview him several times. And yeah. those interviews were always really awkward. But the pre-talk and the post-talk, because when you interview guys for media, you, 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 you know, the interview itself traditionally is not as good as the conversation you have before or the conversation after. And Norm was incredible. Like, he would ask questions about you. How's the weather up in Canada? What's this like? Where do you live in that city? Do you know this person? Always do you know that person? Always working on an angle. Yeah, and always. he's always like, and and I, and I got that impression lock, to your point, is that, you know, he was asking because he was trying to come up with material, but he actually gave a shit, right? I and think one he of the gave fucking, a shit. I, 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 yeah. I don't mean to make it sound like um, he didn't, but 
Yeah. I, I liked Norm. I wasn't a massive fan. Mm -hmm. For what uh, reason? I, I, like, well, the I thought his, just boring I to you? thought his acting was, was brutal. Like I loved fucking Farley. Chris was in it and he was there. Whereas Norm, he could deliver a line, but he couldn't hang on to a character. He was always kind of just looking at the camera. You know what I mean? It, it, and so mm -hmm. uh, for me, he was a good, he was a good standup. He was a bad actor. Wasn't uh, that all part of his shtick, though? Sure. Like, yeah, the shtick where he way? was the same guy it, in every movie. Yeah, yeah it worked. Yeah, exactly. It worked. Yeah. It's yeah, fine. It me. I mean, but I'll, uh, another guy, that if, if you compare, because I think they're on a similar, they're on a, they're skating on a similar pond, was um, Bill Murray. But fucking Bill Murray could jump into a character and hang on to it. Whereas I mm -hmm. don't think Norm had that. So he stayed here and everyone flew past him. And maybe it was mm -hmm. a lot to do with work ethic. And the thing that the people love about Norm was he was so fucking likable. You, you, you couldn't help but love the fucking guy. Yeah. Yeah. There was some humanity there. My, and, and again, I, I was a fan of him on Saturday Night Live on the, the weekend update as well, Dean. It, you know why I was a fan? Because he changed it. He made that his own. And he changed it forever. They're still doing – he he wrote the template for that fucking – that weekend update. He made it what it was. Yeah. And and everyone followed suit afterwards, and it's still – there's still Norm in the weekend update to this date, right? Mm. And he, you he know was what, you brilliant. Know, he was fucking brilliant. I just didn't think he was the greatest actor. No, I, I, and, and I think – I don't think you're going to get a lot of pushback from people when it comes to Norm's acting, but I don't think Norm really gave a shit about the acting. I think he really cared about, you know, the content, the material, and he just, just being exactly who he was, which is why he was incredible, right? Yeah. Um, to the point where, like, he had cancer for the last 10 years. 10 years. That's wild. And it's at work. Like, no one knew. We yeah. don't know what kind – like, I, I'm, I've yet to read what kind of cancer he was battling. Um, that may yeah, have come we out, but I haven't come that. across it. No idea what it was. Um, but to the point where he was dealing with this, and he's battling this, and he worked it into his just for laughs set without telling anybody he he had cancer, and it turned into what I think is going to be a legacy bit, where you're like, holy shit, this guy was de like deliberating in his own mind uh, while he was battling this cancer that eventually took his life, and he was able to turn it into humor. Like, that's the incredible part. The reason part. I don't Watch like this. it is because in the old days, they go, hey, that old man died. Now, they go, hey, he he lost his battle. <laughs> that's no way to end your life, you know. What a loser that guy was. <laughs> Last thing he did was lose. <laughs> he was waging a brave battle, but at the end, I guess he got kind of cowardly was what happened. <laughs> and then... The bowel cancer, it got brave. You got to give it to the bowel cancer. You know, they were in a battle. And then, what the <laughs> And I'm pretty sure, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure if the cancer dies, I mean, if you die, the cancer also dies at exactly the same time. So that, to me, is not a loss. That's a draw. That's a, you know what I mean? It's not like... The cancer's gonna jump up and go, ah, I Uncle Bert's wife. Where is he? <laughs> I won fair and square. <laughs> this where he works? Hi, name's Cancer. How are you? Where do I? <laughs> you just throw me to my cubicle. Right? <laughs> Bow. First name is Bow. You know? Brilliant. Like that, that, that had a totally different different uh effect on me watching it after i knew he passed away right because you're yeah. you're, you're sitting there going how do you like uh, most people most serious people when they hear that they've got cancer they talk about it right they're like oh i got this thing i'm working on it it's they use it some will use it as an excuse some won't some will put it out into the ethosphere because they want other people to identify with them he related to people through his comedy and he channeled all that stuff to your point it turned into a bit 
it turned mm-hmm. into a bit without us knowing why it turned into a bit. And he never and he, told and us. And he until hid himself over. behind all of that shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's, which, which is, which is kind of sad. Amazing. I mean, that's why my favorite moment of his is the is the Letterman appearance because mm. you, he showed a piece of himself there. Yeah, I got definitely. it here. You want right, to watch like, it? This is he, uh, he was likable, and people were people that watched him uh, appreciated his comedy. Did we know him? I, that's mm. that's the thing. Like, I, I, it's I don't know. I don't always connect with those individuals. Right? No, I, and that's I know. I and I, I'm, I get missing, that. I'm missing that sort of connection with, with Norm. Right. Like yeah. I like real fucking people that wear their, their hearts on their sleeves and, and, yeah. and he was brilliant and you're never going to take that away from him and fucking funny. And, and he, like I said, uh, he's, he did things in the comedy world that like, he was the guy that used to write jokes for other people and give them to, he did that. He started that. Mm-hmm. So he mm-hmm. would write jokes, give them to other people on his on his fucking stupid YouTube thing that he was doing. Right? Mm-hmm. He used to drive other comedians crazy. I, I don't know if you guys ever watched Adam Carolla. Adam used to um used to bring him on and go, What's what are you doing? You're the funniest fucking guy I've ever seen. You could own the the world. And you would live with your fucking mom and you don't have a driver's license. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that, that was the kind of thing that 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 drove his his uh, his core and like people that knew him drove him nuts. Yeah, crazy he, because he didn't fucking he, brilliant. He, he didn't he, brilliant, but didn't have any desire to ascend to other things that other people were doing. To your point, and speaking to the depth, did we really know Norm Macdonald? It's a great question. I, I I don't know. I mean, I think this is as close as we'll get. Uh, that Letterman appearance, his final Letterman appearance, uh, when he was when Letterman was going to call it quits. And the emotion that went into it. This is this is uh, the last clip we'll play. Well, the second last clip because there's an even funnier one with him and Larry King. And folks, this will be my last time on uh, the David Letterman show. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, you guys, we all know that David Letterman was the greatest talk show who uh, host who ever lived. But I. <laughs> Dave differently because the first time I saw him, I was 13 years old. I was living in. Uh, <laughs> 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 I was living in Toronto, Canada, and I went to a talk show they had there. And uh, David Letterman was the stand up comedian on the show. And uh, I loved stand up. And David Letterman did this joke that I told everybody. This joke, I love this joke. It still uh, stays with me as my favorite stand-up joke ever. So I'd like to do it for you if you'd like to hear it. <laughs> he goes, um, I, uh, I, I was on the street the other day and uh, I, uh, I saw a garbage truck and on the back of the garbage truck, there was a small sign that said, please do not follow too closely. <laughs> Another of life's simple pleasures, ruined by a meddling bureaucracy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you remember the old days when, when Dad would pile the kids in the station wagon and we'd all go out and follow a garbage truck? <laughs> so anyways, I'd just like to say, I know that uh, Mr. Letterman is uh, 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 not for the mockish, and uh, he has uh, he has no truck for the sentimental. But if something is true, it is not sentimental. And I say in truth, I love you. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Oh. Wow! You know. Like just powerful stuff, there, uh, and, right? and and I love that that's showed himself. That's a legacy, real yeah. yeah, he right did. There. I also love that's that funny. he almost can came I, out of the. Yeah, please. Can I can I can I say something about that? That mm-hmm. just it means nothing about Norm or anything. I that's exactly where I fucking cut it this morning. That's exactly where I started it this morning as well. Mm-hmm. We played that exact same clip. Yep, and he might oh, have been something. sick there. That was 2015. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, for yeah. sure he was. He'd been battling yeah. it for like nine years. You could see his puppy yeah. face from the steroids and the stuff yeah. that he was going through. Um, but let's end this on a let's end the Norm tribute on a positive one. His appearance with Larry King before Larry died, where he almost came out of the closet. Have you guys seen this? No, it's quite possibly one of the greatest fucking clips in the hit. You can hear people on the set of Larry King's fake talk show dying laughing. <laughs> it is out of control. People don't know about you. I'm a deeply closeted gay guy. No kidding. Well, I'm not coming out, though. Wait a minute. What are you revealing here today? I'm, I'm not revealing anything. I'm saying I'm deeply closeted. Well, that means you're gay. Well, I, I wouldn't say that. Why would I say that? I'm deeply closeted. No, but I... That means you're very, very gay, but you don't want to come out. You're so closeted... That I refuse to say I'm gay. Right. Exactly. But that... Doesn't that mean you're gay? Hey, 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 easy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> easy, buddy. <laughs> hey, 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 easy, was buddy. I, easy. Was Norm gay? I have no idea. No, like, no, no. He was just... He, he did just, lots I think it was of the whole idea was jokes. Like, yeah, he, he did, did a ton quite of them. A few. Yeah. 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 It's from its context of your time, right? <laughs> Uh, he was a great. Okay, anyway, R.I.P. to uh, to Norm Macdonald, and um, as as a lot of people are pointing out, he's he's with Chris Farley now, right? I mean, yeah. I can't wait to get to heaven just for that. <laughs> um, but no yeah, fan, and and a piece of Canadian history, right? Like a piece of Canadian comedic history, and so people deserves forget to be about that. As that he was. Here's the other question. I don't know if people know this. Was it just a joke that he lived with his mom, or is that true? Because we were fighting about that on the show this morning. Grant was like, that was just a joke. I'm like, I think, I think he it's a joke with his mom. <laughs> no, he had a longtime partner of like 20 years who actually, uh, I think her last name, her name's Lee Hoekster, I believe, who said, okay. no, no, it's like, yeah, he yeah, lived with his wife or partner and uh, you just wanted to He didn't drive, though. That's no, fucking he didn't. true. He hated driving. To the day, dr- <laughs> really? To the day, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like a gamble, like like a gambling savant, like like World Series of Poker guy, loved to gamble, yes. loved to play the sports. ponies, loved to fuck and sports betting. Sports yeah, betting. He, Lost he, he would talk, I remember one times. time. Oh yeah, we talked about it once prior to an interview. I'm like, how's the gambling? He's like, it's not going great. <laughs> <laughs> Does it ever though? No, it doesn't. In the, in the uh, long speaking term. of gambling, I want to I want to move on to uh, Bonzi because you gambled and won. You, you got the vaccine, uh, yeah, in extreme pain. And um, over the past like three weeks, you've been battling this pinched nerve that you think was caused by the vaccine. But you did go to a doctor, is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay, so where are you at? How you feeling? What's up? Because we don't even know. I told you to save it for the show. Yeah, you did. So I went to a doctor last week um, after I was on last. Um, she uh, kind of looked at me and she's like, "Oh, where did you get the needle?" So I showed her and she's like, oh, no, it's not infected. I was like, thanks. <laughs> I could have told yeah. you that. <laughs> Anyways, she just l- l- basically she looked at me after that and said, son, it'll go away. So that's where we're at. She gave me a needle in my bum of steroids and uh, some some other anti-inflammatory. And it, 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 the weekend got worse. The, the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, I barely left my bed. Um, only to get up. I went to the dinner, uh, dinner at the neighbors both times, Saturday, yeah. Sunday night. They were kind enough to host me. Um, other than that, dude, I was in bed, and if I wasn't fucking horizontal laying down, I was in complete agony. And I'm like, fuck, man. What am I going to do here? Mm-hmm. Anyways, lo and behold, I wake up Sunday, uh, Monday morning, and I felt, uh, I felt amazing. First pain-free day. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. And You're I finally feel, flushing that poison out of you. I could feel the numbness and stuff. Um, but there was no shooting, ripping pain that was, you know, in, 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 in affecting my life every day. You know, then, for, can, I, can I just stop you? Like, I never talk like this, like you're talking. I never, ever talk like this. This excruciating pain, this searing disaster in my I've, body, this unbelievable, like, like I've had I've had days where I can't like literally walk because my back's fucked, and I just get on with it. It's like someone going, uh, "My nose is runny." Oh my god, life's terrible. Fucking, you grab a Kleenex, you wipe your nose, and you get on with it. So I like I, I hold get on. What I will Sorry, I will defend ahead. Bonzi uh, right. I'm I am I, and I live I'm in no. Hold on, I'm not saying you're whining or bitching. I come from mm-hmm. the camp of making sure that people know 
if if I'm having a bad day. So I go over and above. Like I I like I'm the same way. I use ex- like I use big words to describe my minor issues. Uh, D- Bonzi, we're in the same camp. Dean can go fuck himself. Him and his yeah. Seriously, yeah. you you I'm were fucking you. laid up for fucking two days. Yeah, three, yeah. Fucking three. Week of feeling like this. If it was three yeah. days, four days, sure, I'd shut the fuck up. I wouldn't sit here and whine about it. But it's the vaccine yeah. for one. My life changed after getting that vaccine, and I have never been in pain for this much time for this long. And it's it's annoying and it's frustrating. I got an idea. Uh-huh. You should changed. send Nicki Minaj a tweet and find out if she can help you at all. Ah, maybe that'll <laughs> help, eh? <laughs> right. so, so you're clear her you're good. cousin's you don't, you, friend her cousin has some balls issue did you see this tweet? no 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 her cousin you got to read this my cousin in trinidad i thought yes his friend like how much how much how further removed can you get <laughs> <laughs> But this is the problem when we had when we had Bonzi on the show. I felt like fucking Nicki Minaj for two weeks because he's like, oh, my shoulder, my back, it's the vaccine. And he's going on about the vaccine and his life changed for the worse for two weeks and stuff. And then you read this tweet from Nicki Minaj. She's like, my cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became uh-huh. swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. Bro, uh, just pray on it. Just pray on it. Make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. Like yeah, that, yeah. that not, and let me explain to you what that did, which is why I was like, you know, when you're explaining your vaccine shit, I'm like, uh, you can't let Bonzi go off on the vaccine's terrible. You can't get it. Fuck it. And you were like that. Like, that's why the big words were like, fuck, Bonzi, relax. I get it. Like, uh, you're, you're, you're hurt. You got a pinch nerve. There are a lot of people that have fucking things, right? Yep. But that one tweet, because that that's one tweet that Nicki Minaj said, <laughs> is that what you had? Did you have chlamydia? Uh, no, yeah, the guy so you have, have sex. You have to. No, have sex her to cousin's get friend diseases, Dean. Her cousin's <laughs> friend got it from his girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So weddings called off. You know what? You know what the president of Trinidad did? He shut down all the medical records for three days so they could investigate whether or not. Nicki Minaj's story about her cousin's friend's nuts was true. And the press conference was like this morning. It is one of the funniest fucking things you'll ever see. Watch this. One of the reasons we could not respond yesterday in real time to Miss Minaj is that we had to check and make sure that what she was claiming was either true or false. We did. We And unfortunately, we wasted so much time yesterday running down this false claim. It is, as far as we know, at this point in time, there has been no such reported either side effect or adverse event. And what was sad about this is that it wasted our time yesterday trying to track down because we take all these claims seriously whether it's on social media or mainstream media as we stand now there is absolutely no reported such side effect or adverse event of testicular swelling in trinidad or i dare say dr Hines, anywhere else none that we know of anywhere else in the world uh-huh. I love how he laughed at the beginning. Hold he couldn't on, even keep a straight on, face for fuck's sakes. I believe yeah, her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. What the fuck right? is going on? Wow. We Nicki live Minaj. in a world where Nicki Minaj is shutting down a healthcare system in another country because of a fucking tweet. And yep. a big old booty. Say this out loud. Tucker Carlson read that on Fox News, that fucking twit. Like, <laughs> he teased his next show coming up the day after by reading yeah. that verbatim and saying, lot to think yeah. about there. We'll be talking about that on my show tomorrow. <laughs> if I fucking was a serious news person and somebody yeah. from behind the scenes handed me a tweet of Nicki Minaj talking about her cousin's friend whose balls swelled up, and I had to fucking use that as the tease for my next show? 
I fucking kill myself. There better not be a window that can open in that fucking building. I'd be done. <laughs> and here's the fucked up part. She's got like 15 million followers just on Twitter. Another like 20 million on Instagram. And 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 like when she so says big. stuff like can that, yeah. Just, can we just stop taking medical they advice they from can't. fucking singers who sing about their pussy? Like fuck off, everybody. Just fuck off. <laughs> Seriously. Although I will say this, I don't mind me some Nicki Minaj videos. I really I, don't. Like ugh. I started watching this one video with her and Ariana Grande, and I'm like, yeah, I dig that. I mean, she's dumb as fuck. But like I, I've always had a thing for Nicki Minaj. I don't know what it is. And so when she came out with that shit, I was like, ah, oh, it's a shame because I used to really like her. Like and, and yeah. Cardi B for the same reason. I still love Cardi B for some reason. I have no idea why, but it's like the nexus of stupidity. Like Nicki Minaj literally entered entered the matrix of misinformation and was taken seriously by Tucker Carlson and Fox News, who did a whole show about whether or not your semen is affected by the vaccine. Holy mother And as, to Lachlan's God. point, Trinidad and Tobago shut down their health care system for three days to investigate the claims that Nicki Minaj made on Twitter, not about her cousin's nuts, but about her cousin's friend's, friend's nuts. nuts. That's wild. <laughs> Here's how this is going to be safe. I'm going to just it. take it one step further away from my cousin. It's yeah. his cousin's buddy's nuts. <laughs> Holy mother. Oh my god! Right? Like that's it, where we're we in, are, man. We're in trouble. Like honestly, <sighs> everybody better start learning Chinese because they're taking <laughs> over soon. We're like honestly. I hope you like egg rolls, everybody, because they're watching this, going, "Holy shit! Look at this!" That the, North America is so incredibly dumb. Like if you think about it, like and and it's not just Nicki Minaj. Like that's just a fucking prototypical yeah. example of what we have a problem with, right? Which is why when Bonzi was complaining about. Guys, I think my arm's going to fall off. I shit myself three times yesterday. It's all the vaccines. Oh, hold on. Like, Did you shit yourself? Shut the fuck up. No, you Dean just up? likes to fuck him. Definitely. And he, he I says, I say big words to... and, and up things. Dean likes to do yeah. that to me, too, a lot. That's not true. <laughs> that is not true at all. I always am the modicum of fucking morality and i'm like this all the time i, I never, never uh, we'll point out a couple of examples where you're not i'm sure they'll pop up here on the podcast i never <laughs> told sure. you guys about the time i actually i i shit the bed um it, it, we teased it last week when when oh, bonzi we was on for the show right yeah um, and we didn't do you want me to tell this story it's a good story i do i do i just want to get some pants some bed shitting music out here first That's okay what I want you to grab do. the bed shitting music <laughs> okay so a couple of years ago, um, this place in town, oh shit, what's it called? I'll think of it in a minute. It's a Mexican place. It's just off of White. Wade, what am I talking about? Wade knows what I'm talking about. It's just north of White on 97th, I think. Okay. Um, anyway, it's a really good little Mexican place, and they have traditional Mexican food. And uh, I got invited. Well, we all did the show, the locker room. We all got invited to go down and take part in a in a taco eating contest, and and I I can eat. I'm not like a professional, but I I can plow food into my into my face hole. So we go down there, and we start eating tacos. And there's three stages of this contest for some crazy reason, and because I kept winning, I had to go to the next level, and and. I must have eaten 30 tacos. Holy fuck. And oh, I felt wow. like shit. They were the little, they're the little ones. And the worst yeah. part about it was um, this place has really good tacos. And you want like they're t they're they're traditional, like the, the soft shells, right? And no. you roll mm. them up and it, they're so good. El Cortez. Thank you, Wade. And so anyway, um, I, they wanted me to hang out and drink beers and everything like that. And I'm like, I, I can't do it. Right. So I went home and, and I didn't even eat dinner that night. This was like a three or four o'clock in the afternoon type thing on Cinco de Mayo. Right. So it ruined Cinco de Mayo for me. And, um, I went to bed and I, and a lot of people don't know this about me. Like I, I fucking, when I sleep, I crash. Hard. You sleep naked. Oh yeah. Full, sleep naked. full butt ass naked. I have since as long as I, I don't own pajamas. I never have. 
So I crawl into bed a little bit early that night because I wasn't feeling very well and I fall asleep. And at some point, my wife wakes me up and she's just standing over me. God love her. She's like, Lachlan, Lachlan. And I kind of wake up. She goes, I think you shit the bed. <laughs> and I sat up and I went, oh, I oh, did I shit did. the bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's how my is, that's the only that time I ever remember shitting again. the bed. What's that? What's that, what's that how, Bonzi? How has she ever had sex with you again after you shit the bed in your in your wife's shared bed? There's a lot of reasons for her not to have sex with me, and that's on the list. God love her then. Wow, eh? what a woman. <laughs> Good for you, yeah. Lock. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, you gotta yeah. love the dude when he <laughs> proactively takes a big shit in your matrimonial bed, and you're waking him up, standing over, going, "Honey, I'll be honest. It wasn't a huge log. It was bed. kind of a disappointing amount." Well, I think what was happening was there was so much going on in my stomach that it was just like we got to get let we got to get rid of a loose a Make little a bit little here, room. right? Like <laughs> we gotta. <laughs> You gotta make some room. Yeah. Yeah. No. Jesus. <laughs> never shit the bed. And never pissed the is... bed either, Nogamwood. No, me neither. I've never shit the bed, nor have I ever pissed the bed. In my life, I've never I... done it. Like I've woken up going, uh, oh my God, I don't feel good. And I've had to go and and void, as they say. I've also woken up going, like in a dream, going, Man, I gotta piss. Like I I like being in pain that I had to urinate in a dream. And I had I got up and I'm like, Oh my god, I actually legitimately have to take a piss. But Generally speaking, that was back when I was drinking a lot, right? Like where yeah. you're like, oh, is all the things you're putting. I've never once, never I've never once have myself. I, I've never florched in the bed. I've never cr farted in the bed and drawn mud. Um, yeah. And traditionally speaking, after a, a taco eating contest, I would have just assumed that that you would have taken the necessary precautions before Maybe you maybe put some boxers on at night or something. Well, yeah. I, I like honestly, I, I do think back on that that moment of decision where i went to bed without dealing with it like at least sitting down for a minute to see if anything would happen um but i'm all i've been that guy like i i shit when i need to shit i'm not one of those sit around and wait for myself to shit and i can shit anywhere so i'm not worried about shitting at the gas station or on the side of the road or oh, at no, work i can't i can't do it dude place. i'm not if if yeah, I would have to have a growler on deck that was killing me to go and take a dump in a, in an SO bathroom. It would it, it would have to be. I Not would me. have to have the full sweats going, the bending over cramp, oh, that. like the like. I would have to be so, in yeah, so much bumpy. pain. Yeah. To be able to not like I've literally driven half an hour home so I can relieve myself and driven a half an hour back to the baseball dime because I've got zero what? for my kids stuff. I've got. Yeah, dude, I can't take a dump in an outhouse. How I'm many so people glad you know, I'm take not dump like in that. Outhouse? Uh, I'm Are you so serious? Glad. Yeah, dude. Like, I you can go into a You can go into time. a Porta John that you has been I, at Klondike days for a week, right? Let's say Porta John Klondike days. Yeah. You've got to go to yeah. the washroom. Will you go in and use it? No problem. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, just exactly. bathroom. Uh, no problem. Traveled, that is unfucking real. Traveled yeah. across Costa Rica and Nicaragua, and there's times when you're on a you know a bus trip and you're going town to town, and you get there, you you can't get off that bus fast enough. And the closest shitter, ah, dude, I've I've been in some gnarly places in those countries. <laughs> My best shitting moment. They were doing construction downtown Winnipeg, and they had a blue porta potty on the Meridian. Yeah, <laughs> and I had to take a shit. And I was Come with on. some buddies and I looked at them and I said, I'm going to go use that. And they're like, no, that's for the workers. And I'm like, it doesn't have a sign. And I walked up to it, opened it up, dropped pants, shit my fucking drawers in there, fucking wiped up and went to the bar. Anybody say anything? Right downtown. On a Meridian. Nobody said nothing. No one said anything. I got a couple awesome. of guys looking at me. They were still working. Yeah. yeah. Did you wave to him like, hey boys, what's up? Just gonna yeah. go take a dump. I'm Thank good. you. You gotta go, you gotta yeah. go. You. Good timing. <laughs> well, shit, yeah, dude, it's like there is no the way. Like, I respect the shit out of people that like you that can actually do that in a place where it smells like death. Like, if you ever been to like let's let's say a KOA campground, or if you've ever been to an outhouse, everybody's familiar with outhouses, right? Like Porta Johns and outhouses. Porta Johns have some chemicals in the bottom that kill part of the smell 
and and all the other stuff that comes with you know going to an event and you go into these things you're like eh, it just smells like chemicals in here and turds but chemicals mostly and and it's and it's part of it is like when I was a kid I remember going to Banff National Park with my parents and my and I had to go to the washroom my, my dad's like there's the outhouse and I walked in and the smell literally gave me fucking nightmares for weeks and I, I turned around and I said to my, I had to be like seven I'm like I'm not going in there there's no way. It's it smells like a fucking uh, a horror movie in there. Like I imagine that is what death smells like. It's that pungent, weird disgustingness in an outhouse that I've never been able to get away from. So for me, going into a bathroom, like like if I have to go, I'll go into a, like a like an SO, I'll open the door, I'll have a look, and and I gotta be in real trouble. Like it's it's either the, that uh, or shit my pants. Have you have ever you shit in a golf course? Right, like an emergency uh, situation? course I, I have toilet paper in my bag dude i go into the woods take a dump wipe my ass and i leave it there it's all good <laughs> yeah hey yeah, hold on let me ask you a question have you yeah. you're 40 oh you're gonna have to do something you're gonna fucking hate soon when you <laughs> turn 50 you gotta do this shit on a plate test i so you what have you to you have to sh- it can't hit water you gotta shit on a plate scoop up a bit take it into the lab you're when when 50 rolls around you're gonna have to do that call me i'll i'll, I'll walk you through it i got some tips and when i say shit on a plate i'm not even kidding i shit right on a paper plate i just put it in the toilet and dropped load on there and then just scooped it out you want to talk about smell wow you're a beaut lock holy <laughs> shit what is that <laughs> test called uh colo guard is it the colo guard test the rectal exam like no, where you no, just no. take a little no, bit they, of your stuff no. and you send it in. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called something. <clears throat> Everybody knows. Anybody who's hit, hit 50 knows what I'm talking about. They test yeah, it to see if you got any cancer in there. Yeah. Yeah, because and it they shows give you up advice your... on how to do it. They give you advice on how to do it. And I'm like, I got a way better plan. Paper plate. What was the advice that they gave you? What did they tell you to do and what didn't you um, do? It, they, were, they were talking about like crapping on toilet paper or something and like and i'm like that's f- what what a waste of time i'm not going to try to build an island i like <laughs> i laid a plate in there I gotta, you build an island of toilet <laughs> paper and then you get to you fit. take a dump strategically uh, on the island cheese whiz, the fit shit on a plate paper plate test fit test is that wow. what it's called the fit test yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's what it's called no, first, I, I had to do it twice because the first time i didn't use the thing that i thought well here this is good enough the more the merrier so i just took mm-hmm. the plate folded it up over my dump threw it in a uh in a 7-eleven bag <laughs> sam allow <laughs> <laughs> took it to them. And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, that's my shit. <laughs> you guys wanted shit. It's Lachlan's a fecal sh- matter <laughs> at its finest in a Samuel bag. <laughs> you guys wanted shit. You guys wanted shit. Here's all my shit. I didn't, uh, I wasn't bringing you a little shit. I was going to bring you a lot of shit because I want to make you sure. Tell? Like, what are you going to get from a little vial like that? I got a whole plate of this stuff for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lachlan. God bless. Did you really go like in there like that? that? You went in there with what? way too much for them just to make sure. <laughs> sir, that's not what we need. <laughs> sir, that's a little much. Ah, uh, sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I threw it in a 7 Eleven bag. <laughs> you walk into a into a fucking hospital where you gotta bring your stool sample and you're like, you hand them a 7 Eleven bag and inside the bag there's a paper plate folded in half with a Eagle massive steamer. man steamer in it. Yeah, I mean wow. That is fucking that, that's what oh, a man oh, does. That's, steamer. that's what a guy Woo-hoo. does. You know what? That's the Lock, you're the same guy. When something doesn't fit, you get a bigger hammer and make it fit, right? Like that that's what you do. I mean uh I couldn't imagine it's like a semen sample. I had to take one in once. And have you ever done that? Have you ever have you ever yeah. had to uh, give a semen sample? Yeah. Yeah. So it's after my vasectomy, I'm like, uh, they're like, yeah, come back and give us a semen sample. And I'm like, all right. And I winked at the guy, I'm like, you got it. 
<laughs> I go, do you want me to do this at home or you want me to whip up a batch here? Like, how do you want to do this? And he's like, no, nah, you, you just got to give it a pull a few times a week. And then you got to get all the swimmers out. It's like, yeah. it's like the end of a tube of toothpaste, right? That's how yeah. he explained it to me. Get, you gotta get all the stuff out. So you got to, as they yeah. call it, release as much as you can. So I'm like, so I got to masturbate like all day. And he's like, probably. I'm like, no problem. So <laughs> anyway, long story short, I didn't like, I didn't, I went I, like you, I don't pay attention to the instructions for these things. Right. <laughs> like I don't open up the bag and get the little thing. So over the course of like two, three days, cause I, in my, in my mind, I'm like, the more I put in here, much like you, the more they have to choose from, right? You like the more they the can. Cup. <laughs> so yeah, for like four days, I just kept filling it up, like filling it up, filling it up. And I took it and he's a buddy of mine who we had a cottage right next to him. The doctor, the guy that did my surgery. And uh, I brought it in, and about four hours later, I get a phone call, and he's like, hey, dude. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes, uh, tell me, I just got a call from our lab tech. T- tell me that's not just one day's worth. <laughs> I like, got mine no, it's done like in four days. It's like four days worth. And he's like, yeah. So this, we can't use any of this because like the previous three days are toast and, yeah. you know, you got to, and I'm like, oh, he goes, where'd you keep it? I'm like, in the drawer. He's like, no, it's got to be in the fridge. And I'm and he goes, can you read the fucking instructions at least? And I'm like, I'll do my best, but I can't guarantee you anything. It just right? told like, you to go home and jerk off as many yeah. times as you could. That's all. So you much heard. like you, Locke, I'm exactly yeah. the same guy. Yeah. So like when I comes from my, my colo guard test, I plan on giving them too much to work with as well. Fit test, yeah. The full paper plate. So my, my, uh, my, I got my vasectomy in Winnipeg and I, um, I had a, I had a problem with mine because I kept testing positive. Right. So I would, so I had to go back like three times and the third time I went back, I, now I'm getting frustrated. Uh, because he's like, fuck you. We might have to do this again. And if oh. you're God love everybody in Winnipeg, but if you're smart enough and you make enough money and you still have chosen to live in Winnipeg, there's something wrong with you. And I got my nuts clipped in Winnipeg. So I was already concerned about the doctor. Yeah. So I get this third test. I walk in. And the other thing you have to realize is because most doctors who make enough money and are smart enough move somewhere else. They don't live in Winnipeg. And so there's four doctors for the entire fucking city. So every weight room is packed. So I get there, I'm in line and I got my bag with my post vasectomy sample and I'm waiting to go up and drop it off for the woman at the clinic. Right. And it's a full waiting room. And I'm trying to be as discreet as I possibly can. I had a pretty, <laughs> pretty successful show in Winnipeg. A lot of people knew who I was. So yeah. I wasn't a fly under the radar guy either, right? So I walk up to the counter and this woman is clearly brand new. She is like just recently started within the last couple of weeks. You can kind of tell she's flustered. She doesn't know what she's doing. And uh, she says, can I help you? And I said, yes. Under my breath, I'm like, I'm here. I to drop off my post vasectomy sample. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm here to drop off my post vasectomy sample. She's like, what? And I'm like, (laughs) Jesus Christ. I'm here. Now I'm getting agitated and I'm loud. Now everyone in the weight room is paying attention to me. A couple of them have recognized me as Lachlan Cross from Power 97. I'm like, I'm here to drop off my post vasectomy sample. She goes beet red. She realizes yeah. that I got a bag of cum in my hands. And then she starts frantically looking around for something i don't know what she's looking and then i realized oh she's got a list of questions for me so now now i'm on stage so she's like okay and so she starts asking me a couple of questions my name la da 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 and then she goes when did you do it and i said in the car on the way down She didn't know what to say. I'm like, I'm kidding, ma'am. I did it at home. It's like two or three. Can I just leave? She's like, yes, yes, yes. 
and like wash your hands. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Wash your hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, women uh, obviously have, have have you know, women have I far far worse things face. to go through. Yeah, women yeah, have yeah. far worse things to go through on that regard. But I mean, if you when when dudes start like handing off semen samples and yeah. you get to that point in your life where you got to send your poop in to have it looked at, I mean, <laughs> that's that's when the fun starts, guys. Yeah. That's really when the fun starts yeah. because it's locked. Try my paper out, plate. Try my I'm paper going, plate thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to. We got two years to go to look forward to shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like I Lachlan's theories sound, you know, maybe 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 one half kilogram might not have the cancer. The other half kilogram might. Right. That's the way uh, I look at it. Yeah. I think we've done some good work here. I've got this uh, video I want to play you guys. OK. To, to, to end the show. And. um. I want to end the show because of the topic of conversation, which, by the way, we had no idea we were going to talk about pooping on plates. None of this came up in the (laughs) pre-conversation. So forgive us that Canada's second-ranked daily news news podcast just went into the toilet for the last. But these are real things. These are real life things. These are real life things. I feel like we've helped people today. I do, too. Yeah. And... Um, I, I don't, I don't feel embarrassed by telling people our stories. I think it, it, it gets people out. I think people are like, oh, that sounds great. I really like, like this kind of stuff, not something you should be doing. Welcome to the barbecue. Lady. Hello ladies. Welcome to the barbecue. I would like to point out something about the the, the girl with the bra top. Go yeah. back, play it again. Everyone watch right. her. Hello, ladies. Welcome to the barbecue. Now, listener, what, you, what you're not seeing, hang on. What you're not seeing is a guy on the ground at a park. Ladies walking by uh, on, on a park, like a, on, a, on a walkway. Yeah. And, he, and he raises a leg and he lets one rip and he says, welcome to the barbecue. Now, that's not a barbecue. But sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, listen, she's saying that was gross. But her face was saying, I'm okay with it. She was laughing her ass off. See this, Monty? See this? Welcome to the barbecue, ladies. Watch this. Hello, ladies. Welcome to the barbecue. <laughs> you know what? She, right. also, she, she loved it. She loved it. It was a great icebreaker. Yeah. You know what, too? I would like to commend him on the proximity yeah. of the mic, too. Because he great got... Great job. Yeah, like he got a good he got a good slapping noise there. Like that was like right that was very yeah. audible. Like and that's mm-hmm. that's what that is, that's placement. Right? Yeah. That's you know what that's a guy that, that thought about it ahead of time. Yeah. Said I'm gonna have to hear the fart. I'm gonna have to <laughs> eat food that makes me want to fart. And I'm gonna record some viral videos. That video has over two point four million views online. Two point four million because it's exactly it's right. Exactly. People love farting. Two point four million people so far have played this video over and over and over again because it's the. Hello, ladies. Welcome to the barbecue. <laughs> You're right. She loved it. Old. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could never do that because I can't time. cue them up. I'm not a farty no, guy. Neither. I've never been able to. We got Jimmy, though. This is giving me some ideas. Jimmy's always got one ready to go, like literally. Does he really? Yeah. One in the chamber? Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's like a whole series of bits. Welcome to Jimmy's Barbecue. you telling me that that wouldn't be the funniest <laughs> thing in the world, seeing a little guy laying around in the park, letting him rip, saying hi to the ladies, lifting his and legs. The, and whatever God gave him in the uh, construction and the ass department gave him this ability to make just the 
the best sounding farts ever. It sounds like mm. ripping cloth. It's so funny. Emily says, quote, passing gas will always be funny as F. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Emily geez, watching. Naked Cheese Whiz says, I laughed, I cried, I farted. It was a good show. And then uh, Leanne says, yeah, don't shit on a plate. <laughs> Leanne must be a healthcare <laughs> worker. <laughs> uh, naked Cheese <laughs> Yeah. So let's Man, listen. It was a paper plate. It was a paper plate. Ah, <laughs> uh, and you know what? I think we help people. I really do. I feel like we help people today with this. At least we can have a fun conversation about having your poop checked, right, guys? And Bonzi, we still yes, do not have definitive proof. I, I want to point this out. We still oh, do not God. have definitive proof that the vaccine caused whatever issues you are going through. Although you firmly believe it in your heart. And the doctor, I want to point this out too, a lot oh. like Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend, the doctor didn't say that what you're going through was caused by the vaccine. That isn't to suggest that people aren't experiencing side effects from the vaccine. Yeah. Right? I, I there are. A that's, a great, gonna... that's a great question. That's a great question uh, in, in, in Lachlan's statement. Because we've glossed over the fact that she said it wasn't vaccine related, correct? No, she never said those words. She never said either she way. She never said she it was. She said, said the pain from this will go away. Is, That's all she said. We didn't talk. Did she exactly. say it was nerve related? No. Said after she looked at my arm where the needle went in, her last words were, it'll go away. That's it. She didn't Do you say think it you was were so the she didn't say fucking it wasn't. stressed out about getting the vaccine that you might have? No, I wasn't stressed out about it at all, dude. I wasn't. Okay. I wasn't right. stressed. And and I worked for two days after, and I was fine. So I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. Um, but listen, I feel... You, I, I, I still think you yanked something when you were let's working hope out. It's, it's like, almost gone. Yeah. I do, too. I think I think the whole thing was a ruse. I do. Yeah, I just wanted content. I, I, I just wanted content no, for the show. I game. think you legitimately were injured, I but think I don't think too. it had anything to do with the vaccine. I'm not positive on that. Yet. We, I just... What's that? Go ahead. I don't know. What? We'll never Honestly, know. Don't say we'll it. know. No, I just don't know if we'll ever know the, the don't truth. Don't you want to know? Was or was not from the vaccine. How, how the f are we going to Now, here's what makes me think because I'm not the only one. I've had people reach out. Strangers on Twitter, another uh, means, yeah. or or my girlfriend or my brother ha is going through the same thing, and and they've been at this for two or three months. I, I've only been at this Sorry, one lady. Did you mean? Did you mean um, is, is are you talking for an MRI? Are you talking about your cousin's friend here again? Is this another Nicki Minaj thing? Your cousin's <laughs> friend? No, but. Just people huh? saying uh, their loved one or themselves are going through the same thing, and it's been months, not there, weeks. Dean, there are legitimate, no. there are legitimate <laughs> side effects to everything, and some people yeah, can't take sure. Tylenol. They'll fucking take Tylenol and they'll die. My wife can't take Advil. Like Jimmy can't take Advil. He gets really fucking sick from it. I can, I, I eat that shit like candy, right? Like everybody's body is different, and everybody reacts differently to all these these, you know, these medical things that we have to deal with in our lives. I just, I, I feel this overwhelming necessity to, to have a fair converse, a fair and balanced conversation about shit like this when it happens. And instead of, you know, having Tucker Carlson read a fucking post about Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend, right? Like that's, that's dangerous. And I yeah. think you should try to figure out what actually happened to you, Bonzi. I, I really do well, because what if okay. you have to? What if in six months, two years, whatever it is, I mean, this thing is still fucking kicking our asses, and we all have to get booster shots. Like you should nah, be. Fuck, I don't know about that. You sh you should be trying to figure out what the fuck happened here, so that you can g have a definitive idea. If Big moving gun. forward, you need to. What if you can't come home if you don't get a booster shot? Like I'm, I'm just suggesting there. There's a lot of things that could happen in the next year. How the fuck do we get? We can't determine it. You know, we can't predict yeah. any of this. Uh, Figure I, out what happened I, to you, man. I took some of Dean's advice. I, it wasn't a chiropractor, but I, I had some physical therapy last about half an hour. It was torturous. 
Um, but but she really did an amazing job and got some some movement. Like I was in a lot of pain last night. I wasn't doing so good sitting with the neighbors. And the one girl was just like, dude, get over here. Sit in this chair. And she worked on my arms and my shoulders for a good half hour, 35 minutes. And I'm super thankful. And there was definitely some relief. Um, she, she, she admitted, like, I think from being tense for three weeks now with, with this and what's going on. And I'm sitting here. I've been just grinding my arm because you can trace the pain um, right from my neck. And it's like eating all the, what do you call it, tendons, muscles or whatever. And you can trace the whole thing where it really is bad. And I had to grind it and grind it to get fresh blood going in there. Anyway, she took over, and uh, today I feel really good again. There's no pain. There's no sh sharp shooting pain, and it's just kind of yeah. numb. And uh, let, let's, I, I think I'm out of the woods for sure. Um, I definitely feel way better. I eat uh, color back. I got some appetite. And, um, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good the past few days anyway. Yeah. Pick up yesterday, but. Yeah, I I remember, but, yeah, I'd like, like you remember out. how you were like you were sitting in pain for two weeks and you came on the podcast with us last week and we're like, why don't you just bite the bullet, spend five bucks and go see a doctor? And you did, and now you're better. Like that's what and we're telling you again, why don't well, you I go now to and figure time. out what happened, yeah. Time. I fucking hate when people say time about this well, that's whole thing. It's like, I don't have time to get vaccinated. I don't get time. Oh, that's right. Well, I'm, well, I'm not saying I didn't have time. I just said time in general, this will go away. Yeah. You know, like yeah. some were four days, some were seven, some were 10. I happen to be almost three mm. weeks. Just luck of the draw, I guess. Maybe it's the Johnson it and Johnson. It crazy about how people handle their doctor's situations. My wife has know, a doctor right? and she's awful. She's the worst. And my wife keeps going back to her. I'm like, why do you keep going to this woman? I mean, like she's, she's not good at her job. She, I mean, half the time my wife comes home and goes, fuck doctor cried again. Like she's crying in the, like this woman is her insane. Doctor, wait, wait, her doctor cries when yes. she goes in for appointments. What? Yes. <laughs> the what kind of doctor is that? Come on. About what? I don't How know. Is she crying? Like, is she crying I about just her get personal angry. life? I, yes. She starts getting into her own fucking personal life and has a breakdown. Oh, my wife doctor. is like my uh, my wife is like that. She you put her in a room with somebody and they just they want to tell her their life story. She's a good listener, right? Mm -hmm. So she and and as a manager, Absolutely. she literally she's the one where people go and and confide in and so this doctor just unloads on my my I keep telling my wife get a new fucking doctor. It's yeah, fucking weird. Yeah. Um, I wanted to before we go, I wanted to also get your thoughts on this video. This is in Edmonton. You're in Edmonton. Uh, female nurse walks out of ER. I love. And this. She's like, it's packed in there, and not only is it fucking packed in there, um, she had to come out and face the cameras and tell people it's fucking packed in there. So just letting you you guys know that it's really, really busy with COVID patients in there. And this protest outside the hospital isn't a lot of fun for anybody who is a nurse or a medical professional. So she tried to come out and tell people, here's what's going on in this hospital. Stop fucking protesting. This is in your city lock. And I want yeah. you to listen carefully to the anti -vaxxer. It's right across the country, though, too, right? Like I know. It's I poignant know, for me because it's Edmonton, but it's happening. It, There's protests right across the country, right? And yeah. it's awful in front of hospitals. Yeah. You're the worst type of human being if you're doing this. Well, let's let's revisit who that person is. Watch this beautiful young nurse, this, this nurse who's trying to explain to everybody what's going on, and then watch the ditch pig who's a, who's literally a, a karaoke uh, DJ. She's karaoke DJ. Well, that's what she does for a living. Listen, karaoke. DJ. That doesn't mean she's not an expert on COVID. Okay. <laughs> it yeah. Is bad. Let them go up to ICU. See all the families up there with their dying patients. It's sad. It's sad that we have idiots when there's a pandemic going on. And if they want proof, they can come in. We're working our asses off to protect these idiots. <laughs> Good for her. I'd be mad, but it's our job, right? But I tell you, the anger would be up to here. They say you're, you're 
with them. There's not any nurses out here, but secretly nurses are supporting them. Well, I'm sure it's true. And if that's the case, they shouldn't be working here. That's yeah. the way I Amen. feel. Right that's yeah. the underground medical system. That's here we go. Because we no longer trust the conventional medical system. Did you hear that, boys? Did you hear yeah. that? That's no that's that's trust. when the ditch pig starts. This woman, she's like, we don't trust met conventional medical wisdom. Listen to it again. Underground medical system. But you know what? When you get it, don't come here. Yeah. Good for her. Exactly. No, it isn't wrong. If you see what we're dealing with in there, you would understand. The only reason she's out there is because of those idiots protesting. Like, I mean, that's that. If if they weren't out there, she'd just be inside doing her job. You it's know what's going to happen? They just go. Sorry, go ahead, Bonzi. Go, go ahead. Is that a case if they just these these fucktards just want to be seen and heard because they're bored yeah. after? 18 months and stuff, and they're like, oh, look what I can go do. Now I can get on TV. I can cause a ruckus. I'll hold up my little sign. Like, what, what We had Car Carmina on, on Monday, and she her explanation was was very poignant. I like I, I keep getting drips and drabs of 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 um of explanation as to where we're at and why we are at where we're at right now. And and every once in a while someone will say something that sort of sinks in and really hits home with with you know the reason why we're at where we're at, and, and that was a moment. I wish I could, I wish I could have remembered exactly what she said. But I, you know what, I have a prediction, Dean, and I think, I think we're going to get to a point where we're going to have counter demonstrations soon. And if they don't do something really, really fucking quick about the hospital protests from mm -hmm. these people, I, I think it's going to get ugly. I think, I think. People are getting mad, and and it's it's interesting because it's the people you wouldn't expect that are getting mad. That are just they're getting so disgusted. It's the ones that don't say anything. It's the girl or the guy in the office that lets the 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 loud people talk, and then they they go and grab their lunch, and they don't say because they know they can't really change their minds. Those are the ones right now that are getting madder and madder. And matter, and they're the ones that are going to be going out, and they're going to be going fuck you, and they're going to be counter protesting and pushing back on situations like this, this, this protest in front of the hospital in, in Edmonton. Yeah, that's my prediction. Yeah, I mean, we got like maybe 20, 30 seconds left because this isn't done. Like, I mean, this, 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 whoever this anti vaxxer is that's challenging this woman who just Rob's finished right, a twelve too. hour shift taking care of people with COVID. And taking care of anti-vaxxers who got sick. Keep in mind that woman also said she doesn't trust conventional medical wisdom anymore. And she also only trusts the underground medical system. Whatever the fuck that is. I should but have had my ivermectin. Of these, what it stands I know. Out there. Every one of these assholes, every single one of them, if they were in a car accident on the way back from the protest, would have no fucking problem giving over their life to conventional medical wisdom. Not one of them. Here's the rest it of the clip. Bad. Yeah. There are not as many COVID patients as you would have us believe. If you go to the government website, it declares the truth right you, there. You know and what? The COVID beds are not full. We got, they are not full. We got floors with outbreaks. Like major floors with outbreaks. Don't tell me it's not as bad the as... The reason the nurses are overworked is because of the protocols. That's why they're overworked. They are not overworked because they are overrun with COVID patients. So if you can stop lying... That you know what? Painful. I work on the COVID floor. I know what's and going on. And how many on. beds are full yeah. today? All of our beds. We got 10 rooms up there. Okay, so 10 beds Sorry, are full and sorry, 20 rooms. 10 are private. The rest are semi-private. And they're all full. Nice, eh? They're like, awful. that woman just walked out of that hospital. She, she's got that crazy fuck uh, standing outside telling her what's going on inside. Like, Call I'm telling you what you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just called her a fucking yeah. liar. Yeah. A nurse. She just I, called a nurse dealing with COVID patients a fucking liar. Lost? How that lovely lady, that lovely nurse didn't go, shut the fuck up, I garbage. I have no idea. No yeah. idea. God the bless her. The thing she's that I... Person I the thing that I don't understand is why why do they get so hung up on numbers? Like 
does it matter if if there's if there's 25 people in Alberta and ICU dying right now, or 150, or does it make a difference if it's a thousand? Like not to them. At the end not of the them. day, human life doesn't matter to those also, people. They've traded getting, their interest in humanity for their own this, selfish interests. We, we keep getting this text all the time too. Report the recoveries. I'm like, what we do? And yeah, everyone knows that it, that a mass majority of the people that get this will recover, and they will go home and they'll be fine. And they're not going to end up in ICU, and they're going to feel like they had the flu for three, four, five, six, seven days, whatever the case might be. But there is a percentage. They're going to get this, and they're going to get it so bad that they might end up in ICU, and then they might end up in a fucking grave. And who cares if it's 10, 20, or 100? It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit what the fucking numbers are. People are dying from this. And if we can do things to help prevent it, just tell me what it is. Yeah, I'll wear the stupid fucking mask. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it doesn't even work. Maybe it's only 5%. Maybe it's 4% effective. I'll still fucking put the mask on. Right. That's a 4% chance. Somebody doesn't get it. And, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that the mask is only 4% effective. I'm saying, what if it was, and somebody told you, I'll be honest with you. You're only got a 4% chance. I'd still wear the goddamn mask. Why are we so fucking hung up on numbers? Like, mm -hmm. why are we sitting there comparing this to anything else that kills people? This is, you know, why I don't understand do you know why people it. do that. Do you know why that woman uh, wanted to intercede on behalf of nurses? Like n not the nurse, but the, the karaoke, karaoke DJ yeah. Yeah. cow. <laughs> do you know why? Yeah. Do you know why she did that is because, and I can, and you can boil it down. And we talked about it yesterday and I'll, I'll, I'll boil it down again real quick today. They're not serious people. <clears throat> They're children. They're children who refuse to grow up. And here's the fucking crazy part. They all seem to think someone has told them along the way of life that the only rule of law is their freedom. Freedom to do what they want. Freedom to come and go as they please. Freedom to not get vaccinated or to get vaccinated. Freedom. Freedom. They say the same thing all the time. Freedom. I have news for all of those people. That, by definition, is called civilized chaos. Civilized chaos happens when there are no rules. When there are no laws, and that is what these fucking idiots are proposing. Not only are they proposing that none of these laws apply to them, but they're also saying that their interpretation of science without any science-based training is the right one. So if you're one of those people out there that hasn't been vaccinated yet, I just want you to know, and, and thinks that, that, that it's a principle of the matter, it's my freedom. It's not. It's the fucking law. And, and I said this at the end of the podcast, your world is going to get so much smaller and the rest of us are going to fucking love it. Love it. Is it nice for me to say that? No, it's not. But I am literally going to fucking masturbate to the schadenfreude as this <laughs> stuff continues to progress. Yeah. And and it's not. And, and listen, all the friends that I have, like we had one of them on our podcast not long ago. He's still not vaccinated. He doesn't want to get vaccinated. And And I was thinking about him specifically the other day because he's a good person. To protect my mind, and Locke, you and I talk about this privately, to protect my mind, I have to literally shift gears to be able to say, Dean, you cannot care about those people because they've made their decision. Their decision is to cause as many problems as they can for everybody so that we all pay attention to their freedom, so that we, 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 they want to get us on side and they want to change people's minds yeah. because they don't want to be subject to the laws of the republic because they think that they're antiquated. They think that 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 this this isn't even a fucking disease. You you can't have those people involved in a successful republic. You just can't. You have to have serious people that are able to put down the toys, stop playing video games, stop smoking cigarettes at these fucking parties and pouring out, you know, bottles of wine for each other in sippy cups at protests and stuff like that. It is all about, oh my God, I finally found a large group of people that think that I'm somebody. And I'm going to continue to be somebody. And yeah, the more I act like somebody online, the, same the more tent, I get right? that fucking external fucking gratification of other people in a community that tells me that I'm right and they're wrong. And that's OK. It's OK that they're wrong because they've made this decision to be able to go down that road and we should accommodate it. We really should. But we should put up with none of it. None of it. 
Like I, 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 I can't. I, I watch that video and it makes me fucking sick to my stomach that someone is legitimately challenging unbiased, fact-based truth from a nurse who just walked off the floor attending to a whole bunch of those assholes and trying to tell those assholes, no, 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 your friends are up there and they're sick and it's real, right? It's fucking really You happening. can hear it in her voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You, you can hear it in her. Well, you see it on her you totally can. face. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the other thing, right? And I keep coming back to this. What What have you lost exactly? Like what, what happened here? Your life hasn't changed that much. Like I, like I don't feel like I'm living in some communist country because, ah, uh, they, they shut down concerts for a summer. Like it just, it, it baffles my mind. You're out protesting. Like, listen, like I keep telling people, go watch how they're handling, um, people that don't get vaccinated and don't wear masks in China. 10 cops roll up on them and beat them to half to death with fucking sticks. Like, like you live in Canada, you live in the greatest goddamn country in the world. The fact that you're even allowed to be doing what you're doing. Not only that, you're probably on the teat too. You probably taking that fucking Serb check so you can spend your afternoons out there. Oh, you yeah, bought a hot dog are. from the anti-vax fucking hot dog sales guy. Like what the fuck do you want? What more do you want here? It's a sunny day. You, you, you know, like there's your, your, your access to things has been very, like, I don't understand what freedoms you're talking about. You still live in Canada. You have free fucking healthcare. We're taking care of you when you lose your fucking job, you loser. Like when you can't fucking do your karaoke job, we're giving you money so you can <laughs> sit at home and fucking do your nails. Like fucking shut up. Like, I don't get it. Like freedoms. Fuck you. It's unbelievable. It, it just, yeah. I need to start Great working to on my it. anger. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. But I, I went off at the end of the podcast yesterday because it was like, it was important, right? To talk about like 80% of this country, 80% of us are, are look at those people, which is probably more like if you're, and I say those people, I mean, you know, asshole okay anti-vaxxers that want to make everybody worse. That's people that don't, aren't interested in the greater good. And um, their world's going to get real small. It's their fault. Like, they're going to blame the government. And what they do to try to get people on side is maybe one of the funniest parts of this whole thing. They tell everybody that they're fighting for us. We're already vaccinated. We don't need it. Like, show's over. Show's Listen, over. We I'm got a lot of vaccinated. things. We got a lot of things we need to work on, man. And, 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 and you know what? Uh, the government is is making they've made a lot of mistakes through this whole thing and and the problem is we never ever get to have those conversations in an environment like this based purely on the fact that um we're so hung up on this massive divide that we can't sit there and break things down and figure out it's going to take us years to break down and figure out what we did right and wrong right because now we're in this either we're like losing our freedoms or or we're a fucking sheeple like there are a lot of things we need to fix in this government in this country there's a lot of things we could do much much better um and and it's being all lost on it, it we're all we're all missing the mark here um because of just we got our eye we're so I not wonder, on the do, you, do you ever wonder too i, I listen I, I know we gotta go but did you, do you guys ever wonder like Two years from now, I think I future think like I play everything out. I'm, I'm, I put it on a track and I go, what would it be like if we did this? It's like Khan's moral imperative, right? Like, let's 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 say, OK, like, let's try and figure out if we did things the way they wanted to do them, what the world would look like. We'd be dead. We'd be fucking dead. Like, I mean, there's just no rules. Uh, freedom is the only rule. Personal freedom is the most important thing. You know, how fucking selfish we are. We'd be dead. We'd all be dead inside two years from this. Like, all of us. So, like, if you if you put the moral imperative into this whole thing, you kind of understand why it was really important for people to get vaccinated. Like, you know, I take all the arguments out of it, big pharma and all that other shit, and then I start thinking, okay, now that we're down this road, now that eighty percent of us are fully vaxxed, and we're gonna there's there will be more, and we have these mandates, and they are coming across the country. Mark my fucking words. But what will happen to those people in two years? What do you think they'll, where do you think they will be? Where do you think they will be personally? How do you think they will be acting? How do you think they yeah. will have been treated by probably closer to 85, maybe 90% of this country? It's going to get worse for them. Fight the universe. 
Oh, how many times on this podcast doesn't describe it, Dean? How many times on this podcast have we we have we, we've hammered home the point? Like you know, we can't shame these people. This is not going to work. This is not effective, and all of that's been thrown out the door. Where we're just we losing our sh- we're losing our shit on people. Like it, it's it, none of it's healthy, and and we're we're making mistakes. They're making mistakes. Everyone's at fault here. No one's getting you know figuring no, out. No, we're not. No, I take issue with that. I don't think we're making mistakes. I I don't. I don't think guys like you and I and Bonzi, people who've done the work to understand this, people who've gone through the consternation and read and listened and gotten source material to say, okay, I'm comfortable going and getting vaccinated because it's for the greater good and it's for myself and the people around me. We're not fucking it up. We're not those guys are. Like we're yeah. we're saying, hey, come with saying, us. We don't want I, fucking vaccine passports. You can't you can't share blame here, Locke. And I know what you're doing because you're a good human being. You're trying not to fucking turn all those people off. They're gone, man. They're done. They're fu- they're fucking finished. These people are like the the asshole family member that finally steals uh, all of grandma's money and takes out her uh, money out of her bank yeah. account when they're not looking. That's who these people are. And the family eventually just writes them off and says, you know what? they're either going to fucking figure it out or they're not. And that's not our jobs. Like it is not my job to make more sense to people who don't want to be made sense to. It is fucking ridiculous. It is absolutely counterproductive to go and talk to a toxic group of people about what they're doing wrong and try to explain things to them because they don't want to listen, which is fine because I really don't fucking feel like talking to them anymore. And so when you say we've done a lot of things wrong, it's all been about self-awareness for me. It's all been about, okay, well, listen, I've tried to make sense to you We can, and we'll continue to because I believe it's fucking the, the responsibility of a normal human being to say, hey, listen, here's what we're dealing with today. Here are the best experts that we can find to explain it to you, and then you can make an informed decision. But when that stuff comes back and they, they start weaponizing us, you're lost. You're done. I'm finished. Don't care. Don't care if you ever get vaccinated. Don't care if you're wheezing through the next year of your life with long haul effects. Don't care if, if, if you lose a loved one um, and it's your fault. It's incredibly sad in general. But in this specific sense, how many times are we going to continue to tell people, here's the deal? How many times are legitimate doctors, like not even fucking us? We're nobody. We're a blog. We're a podcast network. We're 70 different podcasts. We're one booming podcast. And we are a, 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 a blogosphere of people that actually like legitimately take our, our fucking duty to society responsibly. Like we really do. Whether or not we joke around about it, uh, uh, pooping, we have some fun doing whatever it. Whatever yeah. we have some fun doing it, but we actually legitimately take it seriously. So because of that, just out of self-preservation alone, we can't care, and we can't take on the responsibility that other people want to take on that the government won't. Case in point, Jason Kenny not doing a fucking thing about it. Can't even find him. He's in Alberta. Alberta ICUs are 130 percent over capacity here in Ontario. Nothing. The fucking government shut down until fall session right after they came in with the mandate. So if we want to, uh, any kind of policy change or if, if we've got problems with people protesting in front of hospitals, no one's doing anything. So now yeah. everybody's going, okay, well, I need to take it on myself. No, you don't. No, you don't. I, I, I disagree thing, on some level. If you if you can find a way. I don't and, think you and, do. And again, I understand what you're saying. Uh, and, and again, I, I, I get it in the context of, of, of you and I. Um, and, and this podcast and, and taking or or walking away with some sort of guilt about, you know, the rant that I had on the pod. Like, I don't do that. But I do think that it is incumbent on individuals in Alberta and in the rest of Canada to find a way to keep yourself safe because your public officials aren't going to do it. And that's happening. There's a lot of situations in this province where um, they're doing it without the the help of the government, right? They're dragging the government along on this one. For some reason, Kenny has dug his heels in, and I think it largely has to do with the religious vote, the right, the religious right vote in this, in this province, which he thinks got him in. And I talked to him. I interviewed Kenny, and Kenny said that there were no more sides; that there wasn't li- left and right; that everybody was in the middle. And I'm yeah. I'm calling bullshit on that because he's <laughs> making decisions based on yeah. on on how he thinks he's going to fare in the next election, which I think he's already lost to the NDP. Get ready, Alberta. We're getting another NDP government, which will just spend us to death. Okay, now here's the thing. 
there are people in this province that are stepping up. And that's, that's what I mean about doing the right thing. You're not going to be able to go to any sporting event in Alberta without proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within the next couple of weeks. And that has nothing to do with the provincial government. We had a guy on our podcast, on the Locker Room podcast, last week that owns a bar in town, the Arcadia. He just said, fuck it. If the government's not going to do it, I'll do it myself. You need to show me that you are double vaxxed before you come into my fucking establishment. And there's a lot more stories like that, more than a lot. And and you're not going to be able to go anywhere in Alberta soon. In the next month, I think it's going to just keep snowballing. And I think it'll snowball right across the country, regardless of vaccine passport legislation provincially or federally. Anyway. See this? You see that? I'm covering up the QR code so you can't see it. I got my vaccine passport receipts already in my wallet. In my there wallet because I'm ready to go live life. Like, and you're right. A lot of people have had to do these things that the governments won't do in different places. And those are different. I think that those are like different than protesting protesters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I said this in the podcast yesterday. Let me ask you this. You're walking down. Um, and I'll ask both of you guys. this. You're walking down the street with your lovely wife lock. Or yeah. um, let's say Bonzi's walking down the street with a $40 massage therapist. Um <laughs> I thought you were going to say my dog, but thanks. Fuck. <laughs> and you're dating and you're her feeling, now. Right? You're feeling you, fucking plucky. Yeah, he is. You're feeling plucky. You're feeling. Like, Let's go for dinner. We're going for a walk. And you come across an anti-vax rally in front of a hospital on your way to dinner. And some guy starts screaming in your ear on your way past it in the sidewalk. This is a fucking false flag event. This is bullshit. You're killing people in there. I cannot be guaranteed. This is how I feel inside. (laughs) Now, my response to the world is different. I can't be guaranteed right now that I wouldn't reach out and punch that guy right in the fucking head. Yeah, get in a fight. That's what I said. We're going to start to see some counter protesting. (laughs) Exactly. I want to know. Listen, I want to know what your new girlfriend, Yoko Ono, would do, Bonzi. (laughs) Well, he decided it's more, so we said that. No, no, you can't I won't do, do that. It. I'm just joking. Um, listen, I think I was going to say something. Now nah, you totally threw me off, fucking bastard. Wow, well, you're the guy with the $40 uh, hook with girlfriend. Yeah. It's not us. I don't, know. I don't have a girlfriend. Um, She's going to break up the band. Do you, do, do you think we'll see the opposite side of this? So, you know, you have to be vaxxed to get into your buddy's bar lock in Edmonton. Are there business owners out there? Because I'm not up there and I'm not. Humbling at, at, at what, what uh, uh, businesses and what's going on. What, are there some? There's a number that, of businesses like this already. I know where you're going. So oh, yeah. the, right. But will it be the flip side where during the lockdown there was a couple bar. of knock on the back door bars? <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, there's bars lot. where you you won't out into because you're double vaxxed and it, and it's and, and it's uh, the anti vax What do you what What do you only? think? That, what do you think the benefit of that is? You got 80% of the population, even in Alberta, vaccinated. And then you got one bar in town that's just accommodating the unvaxxed. And you're allowed <laughs> they, to smoke, they all too. They like to hang together. Right? Uh, yeah. some pipes. And uh. we're putting out ashtrays, everybody. Come on down. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, honest to God. That's the crowd that, that doesn't want to get vaccinated. They're the no. same, like, the crowd that, that, like, these are the same people that Google, um, if I smoke for 50 years, will I die of lung cancer? Right. Yeah. And then they'll they'll look for any morsel in anything that they've Googled. It's like yeah. not everybody dies no. of lung cancer after yeah. 50 years of smoking. And they're like, fucking, here I go. Yeah. Smoke if you got them. Same thing with alcohol. They're the same people that Google, how much scotch can I have for breakfast? Or is a <laughs> box of wine a day a terrible thing? And they'll read somewhere and it's like, yeah. anything in moderation isn't bad. I'll just mix in a little water. Like that's yeah. exactly how these people are, right? Hi, yeah. That's where they I come, come from. To the bar with my oxygen tank. That's that <laughs> crowd. <laughs> that's the sign of a dive bar. Yeah. Uh, hello. <sighs> yeah. Well, I was wondering if you guys uh, allowing people with guide dogs and oxygen tanks in the bar and uh can you put me in the smoking section thanks yeah <laughs> and then they wheel in on a scooter and yeah. go 
Thank God this place isn't vaccinated. Yeah. Cody, sit over there. It's close yeah. to the door. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta be. Uh, and, okay. and we got a new jar of pickled eggs for you. <laughs> anyway, I feel like we've done more good work at the end of this whole thing, too. Yeah. I Thanks, we boys. Were Appreciate sign it. About 30 minutes ago. <laughs> So did I. I was ready to, and then all of a sudden, uh, Bonzi, you look was, way better, buddy. Happened. You look way better. Keep yeah, us thanks. posted on your on your medical journey. Yeah, yeah, you bet. yeah. and Bonzi go figure out what the fuck that 9 was. Nine p.m. with yeah. Reggie. Are you going to have Reggie on the show tonight? No. Yeah, Reggie. Bill uh, Cosby's came and assistant. Up his rig today. He's he's coming up. Uh, looks like Friday we'll have Reggie on. I got some great stories about Reggie too. It's like me and him and his wife. Oh, did we ever have battle royale over the weekend? She's not a very nice person, Dean. Um, she was the only one here that uh, I got off my show Friday, went over there. They were all watching. They come over because I gave them outs and stuff. They're all high fiving me and stuff. And then I felt like I was still on the show when I was sitting there and just entertaining all these people. And then she showed up. <laughs> she wasn't entertaining Mr. Bonzarelli. <laughs> She thought I was a fucking idiot. She was the only one that didn't like me, and she was just a different cat. Well, uh, listen, I love you. I love you because I know you. I love you because I know you, but I, I get how people would look at you and go, who the fuck is that guy? I have a similar some, problem some. in most rooms. There's a handful that don't get it. <laughs> yeah. That's Why okay. is he yelling? You're an acquired taste. You're like, uh, no, you're like old beer. You're an acquired taste. Is what yeah. You're. I like you. <laughs> sure, we'll take yeah, thanks. I like you too, boys. All right. All right hey, good to see you, Dean. Good to see you hey. too, brother. Uh, well, see you tomorrow. That is Lachlan Cross, 95.7 Cruise FM. Listen to him tomorrow morning for the sound of the day. Sorry we didn't get that, but we'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, also, oh, that is uh, Bonzi, Bonzi Live. Oh, yeah. Still no winner. Radio Still contest no winner. <laughs> oh, surprise. See you tonight. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Bonzi Thank Live you. tonight, uh, which you can find here at DeanBlundell.com or, or Tripping with Bonzi on YouTube as well. Thanks, brother. Really appreciate seeing you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for sticking around. Really appreciate it. Whew. Yeah, I was going to get to the Murder Hornet Nest, Clay. Sorry. Uh, I'll get to it tomorrow. We got a fucking full day. This stuff gets carried away. Murder Hornet Nest clearing tomorrow on the program. Hmm? Not bad. Mubin Shake will join us, too. Former terrorist. Who's now no longer terrorist. He helped stop terrorists. Great Canadian dude. He'll join us on the program tomorrow as well. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being part of it. Uh, don't forget, you can hang out with our sponsors, Easy Auto Financial. If you're looking for a car, easyautofinancial.ca. They're awesome. Great people. They take all the guesswork out of buying a car, getting financing, all that stuff. So here's what you have to do. Go to easyautofinancial.ca. If you're in the market for a car, if your credit is shit, they don't care. All they want to do is get you in a new vehicle, and they do it every time on time, and it doesn't cost you a dime easyautofinancial.ca. Our friends at Blue Microphones have set us all up. They can set you up too. Go to at Blue Mic online or you go to them on Twitter at Blue Microphones and check out everything they have. We use a bunch of different stuff. I use the Blue Yeti X, which is a terrific mic. It's got the preamp actually built into it. You can plug your headphones into it so there's no dicking around with a bunch of other equipment. Plugs right into your computer. You need to get one of these if you're a streamer or gamer. They're wonderful. Uh, our friends at Blue Microphones will set you up. They have stock now, which is incredible, and they're a Logitech group of companies. So check out some of their cameras as well if you're streaming, gaming, whatnot. Uh, go to bluemic.com or at Blue Microphones on Twitter. Uh, and our friends at uh, Domination, they make our job a lot easier. They can make your job easier if you do online content as well. What you do is you feed this file. If you record something into this super incredible piece of artificial intelligence, and it spits out like 72 different promo pieces, donuts, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about if you've done this work. And, and they make it easier. Instead of hours, it's been at seven minutes for 72 different pieces. Try them today. Go to dmntn.com and check them out. Also, uh, last but not least, our friends at Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch. Luxury underwear for men with a pouch in the front. Check them out today. Go to edsfineimports.com. And if you use promo code Gitch and then the number three, that's the promo code Gitch and the number three, he's going to send you three pairs, four pairs for the price of three. He's got to buy three of them. Then he'll send you the extra pair for free with promo code Gitch3. Uh, clothing for men and boys, go to edsfineimports.com. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being part of the show. Talk to you tomorrow, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. He was like, you'll be back tomorrow? Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be in shake. Hornet's nest. See you later. Minus one minute.